So now let's look at the skill removing an IV catheter. You may also hear discontinue or DC an IV catheter. This typically takes place when treatment is completed or the patient is discharging to home. So let's look at equipment. We're going to need a sterile gauze pad and some tape. So before we start anything, don't forget your hand hygiene. And we want to make sure, of course, the patient's provided privacy and we explain thoroughly what the procedure is going to entail. Let's not forget to raise that bed to a working height. We want to make sure we have good body mechanics and we're not hunching over. Now we can open our sterile gauze and set it on a nice, clean, dry surface. We can perform hand hygiene again and put on our gloves because we're about to come in contact with our patient. Now before we remove it, there's a little slide clamp on the extension tubing and we want to make sure this is closed and clamped off. We can slowly remove that transparent dressing and if your facility uses a catheter securement device, we're going to take that off at this time as well. We're going to hold the gauze over the insertion site with our non-dominant hand and then we're going to use the dominant hand to gently pull the catheter away from the patient. So notice we put the gauze over the insertion site and this is where we're going to apply pressure to the site. We're going to do this for at least about 30 seconds until that bleeding stops. Now that we've had the bleeding stop, we can place tape over that to secure it in place for the patient. Now, when we remove equipment, make sure we take a look at that and make sure the tip of that catheter is still intact and everything looks okay. Once we complete the procedure, make sure we return that bed to the lowest position for safety for our patient. We can discard those supplies, remove our glove and perform hand hygiene again because we had just performed a procedure and also make sure we document. Okay, so now let's talk about removal of an IV. So this typically happens if you're a member when treatment is complete or the patient gets to go home. All right, so first, make sure you have your supplies. If you're a member, we're gonna have gauze pads, we're gonna have alcohol pads, and also tape. All right, now I'm gonna perform my hand hygiene. And then after this, we're gonna put on our gloves. Sometimes with that stuff, your hand sanitizer, it makes them stick. Okay, so now that I've got my gloves on, so you want to make sure you explain the procedure to the patient. Now, if you have a male patient, sometimes try to be gentle because this may pull on some hair for your patient. So I'm going to get my stuff ready. So you can open up your gauze pad and leave this out. And sometimes patients may bleed a little bit more than others, so you may want more than one. All right, so now that I've got those open, I'm gonna take an alcohol pad and everybody's a little bit different, but I like to use an alcohol pad just to loosen up the size and the tape. Also, your facility may have like an adhesive remover that looks a lot like these alcohol pads as well, and you can use that too. So now we're just gonna pick a side and slowly start peeling back the corners. So this is just a method that I do, not necessarily per se, but I like to do this because the alcohol loosens the adhesive, makes it a little bit less painful for the patient. And notice how I'm kind of putting his skin taut. If you will do that, that will also help peel back the dressing. And I like to gather the dressing to where peel up all the corners to where the insertion site is the last thing showing. That way it keeps it covered as long as possible. And again, be gentle for your patients with their arm hair, male or female, it doesn't feel good tape. 
Okay, so now that I have all that peeled up, you can see that my insertion site's still covered. I like to not uncover that until absolutely necessary. Now that's done, I also like to get my tape ready, and this is gonna put pressure over the bandage in case the patient bleeds. All right, so now that we've got all those corners peeled up, I'm gonna take my gauze and place it over the insertion site, have everything ready in my other hand, and slowly pull that away. Notice I've kept the insertion site covered. I've also making sure I keep pressure for at least 30 seconds or until the patient stops bleeding. So now I'm gonna also look while I'm holding pressure, I can multitask, making sure the catheter tip is still intact, which it is. I'm gonna put that to the side and continually hold pressure. So once my pressure's been applied, I'm gonna take my tape Put this nice and taut across the patient and then leave that there for them to discharge home. Now, if necessary, if your patient's allergic to adhesive, there's other alternatives you can use instead of this type of porous tape for your patient. Lastly, this is a common misconception, but this is not a needle and this does not need to go into the sharps box depending on your facility. Usually you can just throw this away in the trash. And before you leave, don't forget to return the patient to the lowest position. Make sure that you uh, discard all your supplies, you remove your gloves, perform your hand hygiene, and document the procedure.